Okay. Um, Seven o'clock. Uh, we'll start this meeting at the Yale Street Planning Commission. Judy, would you like to take the roll, please? Indeed. Reed. Here. Sims. Here. Stiles. Here. Elzell. Here. Also present are uh, Village Planner Denise Swinner, um, Village Solicitor Chris Connor, and we do have our our new alternate present, Chris Rubin. Not here is Adam Abraham, who has family matter. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so we have an agenda before us. Um, anyone want to make any changes, modifications, additions? Uh, if not, we have meeting minutes from last month. Um, does anyone have any corrections or changes they'd like to see? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on. Communications. I don't think we have any other than the letter uh, from Judy to Chris Zabukin, welcoming her as our alter. Two things. Uh, number one, we're we're, uh, we're getting close to meeting with uh, is it SpringNet? Can you say SpringNet? Talking about the uh, fiber optics uh, for the whole community. Uh, working on that one. And the second one, as you see down at the, the bottom, uh, well, under OB, uh, agenda planning, uh, council did uh, uh, after we. Uh, we, we talked about we're working on signs, and I think, did we approve? Uh, you guys approved the language the modifications on the pools. On the pools. And the uh, discussion came up on, uh, is it auxiliary dwellings? Am I saying that Accessory right? Accessory dwellings. Accessory dwellings. Uh, the way the zoning code reads now, I believe they're only allowed in the, in the back of, of the property. And, and apparently, it was, uh, there was a one approved, and the folks finally built the house in the front. But uh, I think the main issues are: uh, do we want to allow uh, yeah. accessory dwellings in the front? Uh, and there may be some other issues of this, in the zoning code that uh, council may want to discuss. So we're looking at a joint meeting between the council and plan to kind of get the feeling of how we want to handle the zoning, uh, some zoning changes, and uh, also looking at the comprehensive plan and what does that say. So, uh, there was no date set. Kind of for us, what is what is planning is feeling now? With with council and discuss that. And, uh, you know, one of the comments was that some of the stuff that was put in the zoning code, uh, let's say the fire the consultant that was uh, he may have used some boilerplate language from some other places that go and the flat. No. Did I get that right, Julie? Did I miss anything? Yeah, it, it was basically because those ordinances came up, council members started yeah. saying, oh, gee, you're, you're looking at this particular ordinance, and I, I had thought of other things that would yeah. fit into this section, and Denise had to explain a little bit the process for the whole thing, and please don't stop the train right now. So this went through the first read, and the suggestion was made that perhaps Council and Planning Commission could have a joint session to 
sort of hear some of those concerns and then it comes back to you. And we come back to you regardless. Right. And so just to like add to that, so last Monday I gave the Planning Commission an update to Council, which was long overdue. I had been kind of shirking my duty there. Um, and um, but one thing was asked of me was, uh, are there issues um, that are kind of percolating that we've heard about? And one thing I mentioned was just land use or master plan for village-owned property. Um, uh, glass farm is one case of point, so you've got this attention base and now you're going to have solar array, you know, but is, is there a, an all-encompassing idea of what that is supposed to look like, or at least in a general guidance? And so Brian asked if, you know, we were willing to take that on as a task and whether we had time, and then I think Karen essentially uh, uh, came back and said, well, you know, what we got to do at least is, is for that planning commission review the comprehensive plan and see what that document says about that property and other village properties too. So because I think even out on 343, are you guys deeding that property to the Glen or? Well, it's in the process, process yeah. of being appraised. Uh, the, the other thing, I, they, uh, I got a list of all the parts that we own. And so the parts would also be included as village land. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's. So, is this a meeting where council, like, goes through and sets the agenda for things that they want to talk to us about, or do we both bring, things, you know, because if we're bringing things up to council in this meeting, I think we should have a prior meeting where we talk amongst ourselves mm -hmm. about the things that we want on the agenda for a joint meeting. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. And it would be both. I'll give it to you. It's a work session, so right. yeah. it probably. It wouldn't even be in here, would it, necessarily? Um, it can go either way. It can be an A and B, or it can be in here. Yes. So typically, it's more, it's less formal, and then so there is definitely a give and take of ideas and questions and discussions. So, so I think you're right, because we, we would probably want to at least have a list of what we think are the higher priorities versus the lesser. And uh, well, and and to that question. They sort of were coming at it two, in two different directions a little bit, and one of the things that was sort of thrown out was, gee, council would like to have a joint session with planning commission before before you close the books on the sign ordinances because those are pretty are, are on the sign section of the code because that's pretty involved and they felt like that had impact on development, et, et cetera, et cetera. So. There, that was kind of thrown out, and then there was also the suggestion about a joint meeting. I don't know if we're sure. But, but it all kind of stemmed from some more text amendments that Marianne had presented. Yeah. Um, and then a part of that, too, then, was Karen's suggestion about the comprehensive development plan, which actually is overdue. At last, the last time it was approved was in 2010, so it was actually it was just yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, it was not something that the planning commission was involved with. It's yeah. always the planning commission, yeah. yes, and yeah. it's every five years, supposedly. Mm -hmm. um, not that they yeah. haven't always met that, um, and it's a big ordeal. So, yeah, I think I like. I, I don't know how you want to do this. If we, I, I, I personally would like to get through these text amendments um, before we start taking on that, because that's going to have to be. Well, so Judy, well, and Denise, you guys were. Well, you were there too, Chris. I mean, do they, you think, did you get the sense that they want us to, they wanted to wait on the se second, or on us doing something with the signs? I, it's, my impression was that they wanted some involvement before you bring ordinances regarding the sign amendment. Well, it seems like they should be here today. <laughs> you know, I thought of that, and it's, it's a fine line to walk, right. because, if more than one of them comes to the meeting, now there are three of them in the meeting, mm -hmm. and that can really, well, first of all, now they have to have a meeting. It's a meeting. But even if one or two folks come, there's a potential perception that they're trying to drive your process. And if, if they say, we would like to have some input, we're going to have a meeting, it's all going to be public, we'll come and tell you what we'd like, it's sort of more on the table for people to say, I hate that idea, I don't want you to, 
you know what I mean? It, it yeah. follows a little more of a process that people are probably feel better about. So I think they're sort of trying to carefully walk that line, which is part of why I think Denise and I put it on your agenda to say, there's no problem with you folks saying, you know, it works a lot better for our process but if it happens like this and making that request to council. I don't think there's anything wrong with that and I think it might be even appreciated because I think they struggle a little with how to approach. Yeah, because we give them something we've worked on for several meetings and they see things that we haven't, you know, they we haven't seen or we haven't thought of and they have questions and then it has to come back to us, right? before it goes forward, like we're trying to fix something. I, I think as we work ourselves our way through this, if we come to some kind of agreement on this on this with the signs, mm -hmm. then you know the next step is to take it to them and that might be the place where we do have that joint meeting is for them to is to present that. But they have other things too. Yeah. I mean there was a list it, of in oh, terms yeah. of the uh, the comprehensive plan. Yeah. Now I was on the committee that looked at uh, no. The head goes to the public for a vote. Oh yeah, the vision. No, no, no. Oh no. Uh, oh the um charter review. The charter review. Yeah. Okay. Which we broke it up in in kind of sections <laughs> and, and went through each part of it in the charter committee put together a report, presented it to, to council, and, and most everything that the committee recommended, the council approved, uh, and and I was thinking that that might be an approach that we use looking at the comprehensive plan and then identifying areas that we think should be changed and uh, then present it to, to council, and, which would be in an open meeting. And, Take a look at it and figure out others that way. At, at, at least we would, would kind of have it flushed out a little bit oh, versus, definitely. versus yeah. you know, well, because these 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 joint working sessions, I while mm -hmm. they they sound good, mm -hmm. I just you know it, it could stretch out way longer than than, than anticipate and uh, and. Well, that's why we need to have a, a meeting to plan right. what we are talking about in the joint. And then we, we got inputs from, from, from the public and council also. So, yeah. Well, how, how about with the signs? We just press on today. Yeah. And we just see if we can get our arms around the same bit to a point where we think it should go to council. And then you can ask them in your next meeting next week. Do you want to see this, or do you? Because we'll still need to have a public hearing yeah. here yeah. at our next meeting, and you can ask council. Do you want to have this joint session before you see this, or do you want to wait? And have they expressed what their concerns about the sign? Sign you just specifically. No, no, no. I, I kind of agree with you, man. That's cool. I'm, you know, I agree. The sign I think we should press on because I, I really can't see. Yeah. Where it should be. Well, and, and then yeah, the, the zoning changes, they were, I mean, everything from chickens right. <laughs> brought up because we didn't, I think, I mean, I was on the committee that looked, that was part of developing the draft, and we ran scared from that language because it was so complicated. Everybody's different. People start putting livestock units on animals, and, you know, our peacocks are not allowed, but chickens are, and goats, where do they fit in it? So it was just a, after, Doing this for six months, we just you know we we phase. Well, and so, that you, it can also be in your the nuisance ordinances. You don't have to put it in the zoning code. So I think and I think that's part of where there was a legitimate ability to step back and say it yeah. doesn't have to be here. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So that was another issue that was brought up that yeah. probably is going to be raised if we have some kind of uh, discussion with council about the zoning code. So do you think it would be appropriate though to find out too like what kinds of questions because for example the one one uh, thought that was brought up about no accessory structures in front yards we clearly have that but if 
it's structurally integrated, architecturally integrated. You could have something built in front of what the existing house is mm -hmm. with, a t with a 10 foot or less breezeway that's covered. I mean, yeah. that can happen. So I think that there were, so I mean, maybe there's things in the code that might already address some of those concerns and there might not be a need for me. Well, the other item that was accessory to well, it was built first. Um, and I know there was a specific reason why we decided that. And I don't know all the details right now, but I think the, pro the problem was if you didn't want to have someone build a garage on a lot that's suitable for a, a, you know, a family home and then have them not do anything else and then just leave that lot essentially undeveloped except for a garage or for a you know, a utility apartment or a you know, single person apartment. And I can't remember all the reasons, but I, I think we came down on with that decision. So I hate to have to go through those. Yeah. <laughs> Figure out what we said. I mean, my, I, I was brief, you know, briefly came to some of those meetings and it did seem like at the time that the vastness of what you were being presented with from the consultants and you know changing every little thing to be less restrictive was really time consuming especially when it got to the council but it seemed like council wanted it to be less restrictive but there wasn't really time to make it less restrictive i don't know if i'm characterizing it right but that's yeah. that's what it's especially um, the then village manager was, um, you know, really attached to a lot of the um, suggestions that she was making, and it seemed a little controversial. So, I I definitely think that there are things that in the zoning code that we can come together with council on, not like as a long term plan. Like we need to. Like this isn't in the spirit of what we want to do as a, you know, a planned community. I mean, that is what zoning code is. Well, and I think you're you're right, and I think, the, but the new code is so much more um, open and less restrictive than the old one. Yeah. And I think at some point someone said, you know, we just need to stop and let's just enact this, let's see how it works, let's see where the pitch points are and get those fixed and you know and, and use it kind of as a living document and not be afraid to change it. Yeah. Because it's I mean in terms of lot size and building density and all that stuff. It's mm -hmm. and, and accessory dwellings and home businesses, it's, it's a lot different than the old one for sure. But it was it seemed like the old one it wasn't being enforced. Very well. I don't know. It seems like a lot of the, our existing, what the vast majority of our existing houses, like didn't. I don't know. It seems like we weren't conforming to it if it's more restrictive than the one we have now. Well, especially don't burn it out. All yeah. a lot of stuff was just grandfathered in. Yeah. yeah. In terms of setbacks and lot sizes and everything else, and so we tried to actually make those conforming. Yeah. So okay. Well, we've okay. gone way okay. off the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> But it sounds like that's a question for you to raise with council. And so what's next? Citizens' comments. Judith is our only citizen tonight. Judith, do you have any comments? No. Okay. Our next uh, item then is the public hearing. So it's, this isn't really a public hearing, right? This is just a... Works, a, a discussion yeah, works back on the side ordinances. So Denise, do you want to start with your staff report? Well, yeah, I just um, yeah, I went through the minutes uh, from the last meeting in my notes, and um, there were a lot of changes that were uh, made. However, there was a little bit to the formatting of it, how we were going to um, I think Rose had suggested putting the permitted signs first and, their, and that table up front. Um, and so with that in mind, I 
I put that after the, the purpose and general provisions and then decided to go ahead and pro prohibit, we prohibited signs where they, where they were and then signs that do not require permits after that. I don't know, does anybody have any thought about that structure, how that's laid out? Well, I see the table before purpose in the packet. The table the, that you're talking about, is this what you're talking about? Yeah. It's before purpose? At the, it's at the very front right now. Okay. That, I, didn't, I thought you just meant in terms of how that it should come as we start to talk about the signs. You think that should come before what the purpose is? No, of I don't. But in the... In the no, but I think that that in the packet. It I is. think that's part of a report. I yeah. think if you go through it, oh. then you see it's. Yeah, I it's, think it's actually It's in twelve sixty six point oh three. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Was oh, so okay. okay. Thank you. I, I I was very confused. Okay. Yeah, I was just giving you an example of something that. Yeah, I see. We're working on. But I really like how you're actually labeling the different kinds of signs here. That's why I put that on there at the back of my report. Sorry yeah. for that confusion. No, but um, cause Melissa's helping me with that. We're going to try to close it in. And, and but I, it makes it so much easier. And so you would put that on this chart. That's Instead of where it is right now. So you can replace this one? Yes. Okay. okay. So, so it would be here, but you would have. It would look those. like that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think that helps having to keep switching back and forth between the pages, trying to see, you know, what was A? Yes. A was wall signs, but you know, A was ground signs. We're trying to remember that. Okay. Do you have anything um, else to this? On that, no. Um, then um, under 1266.02, And I don't even know if that needs to really be in there. It's number 10. It, it talked about a changeable message display. And um, I had thrown in, the, in there either manually or electronically where permitted. Um, I guess either manually or electronically um, is something that had already to be on there really or not. I think where I was getting um, concerned with was where we had uh, allowed in B1 and B2 internally lit signs. Um, and so I was thinking that that might pertain to it, but I guess it wouldn't because you could have a ground sign in a, a non-residential in a residential area, a non-residential property, and they could, this is saying that they could go ahead and change that out. So, so maybe, I, maybe we might not, might not want to put that in there. <clears throat> that was one thing. You're saying maybe leave out the part that you added. Yeah, I mean, it was just a thought, and then, you know, but maybe that might not work. Um, I just had added it because of B1 and B2 regarding internally lit signs, but it may not be needed because that is mentioned elsewhere. Can I just add out for clarification? Does that include the signs that are smaller sized signs that flash open, you know, that flash different messages? with LED lights, is that, is that the same, are those included in this? 
Well, flashing is not supposed to be allowed anywhere. It's my understanding. Well, like running signs, like signs that, like you can program. That scroll through the text. Yeah. It, it, the only thing that I understood was time and date was allowed. Um, but like Bentino's has a sign now that oh, there are it doesn't flash, signs. but it it change you can program. That you, know. you can program. Right. Yeah. Isn't it created under that 12, that 12 hour? Cannot be changed more than once every 12 hours. Yeah. Because the message, once he puts it, puts it up, it is static enough, correct? It doesn't scroll or anything like that. It does. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It scrolls. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't mean to throw a monkey wrench into it. I'm only saying that those there are those signs. So I guess part of what you're talking about is, do you allow them or not allow them and, out there? And, and if, it, if you stay within that same area, if you go to the next page, number C, illumination and movement, mm -hmm. um, it says under number two, Signs shall not contain any moving or animated parts, including lighting, except for time and temperature, barber pole signs, scoreboards, and gasoline price signs. But all those other things that you're talking about, flashing open and things like that, already is not permitted. So it sounds like the Bentino sign would not be permitted. And the one at the laundromat. If it's it, no, but if it's moving or flashing, it's not. Now it, we are allowing in B one and B two internally lit signs, mm -hmm. but those are static. But they can be changed according yes. to this. It's every twelve hours. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're static. They're not flashing. We're not. We're, but that was already. Okay, so I have a question about, um, so are we moving all the sign definitions into the definition part of the zoning code? Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm going to kind of go through. Oh, if sorry. You don't want, no, it's okay. Yeah, I didn't say what I was doing, but I'm, I'm thinking the better way to do this is just, okay, and then under that same section, 1266.02, C3, it said, neon signs shall only be permitted within the B1 district, we, we've changed that to um, allow for B2. But in the interpretation of neon signs, when I looked that up, neon signs are electric signs lighted by long, luminous gas discharge tubes that contain rarefied neon or other gases. But now with today, I mean, we, I don't even know if you use as much neon as you do the LED, the little flashing. So I'm wondering if that, term neon should just be replaced with um, internally lit with that terminology because internally lit when I look that up that can include neon that makes sense, mm -hmm. it does make sense. Okay. okay and then let's see and I just wanted to ask a quick question. Since Bruce has brought up the one with the scrolling, um, so that's never been permitted in the village because it seems like it's a newer technology type of thing. And is there a reason why you wouldn't permit it in the business district? You mean the flashing one? No, the uh, one that is scrolling. The, the scroll. I mean, oh. you think it the one that comes to mind is the New York Times here in the uh, Times Square one. Yeah, but like one the like scroll this message big. about news updates or whatever. Well, be. I haven't been there. Columbus has a lot of them. Yeah. 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 But I'm just wondering, because I'm assuming that not that many, I mean, I haven't even noticed the one of Tina, so um, I'm, I'm wondering why, was there ever any discussion of permitting it? And I'm sorry, I don't have my code before 2013. So I don't know if there was any language before that, or if this is new new to 2013. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it doesn't matter, right? Like if we're yeah, right. 
why are we not allowing it is the question. Right. Yeah. And if it's something that you feel should be allowed in B1 or B2. I, I was yeah. just bringing up the question because it seems like it is a newer, you know, that I can see that maybe 10 years ago that wasn't even something that, that was happening, but I can see now. And I don't know if businesses think that they need it for their. I think that the issue where it comes up lately is because of the proliferation of uh, lighted signs that are the billboard style. Yeah. And um, you mean like the big ones? Well, they could be bigger, but they can actually make them small, too. I don't know if you've been to uh, going to downtown Dayton now, where uh, uh, what Goodwill uh, Industries build a three-sided mini tower that has digital signs. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and you know the, the, their ability to change, and they're really, really bright. Um, so there could be an impact on it, it because you guys have people who live in, in some apartments above some of the businesses. There could be an impact in, in close by resident residential areas. And it's like everything else. What's the right answer? Or the wrong answer is the one you decide to be. Yeah, it's right in the front window. It's like this. Long, maybe like this high, yeah, maybe that long. Where's that? In the window of Intimus. It's the only scrolling one. Then there's the flashing one at the laundry mat that says open. Right, which the yeah, the first complaint it kind of bounces off of one and the rush comes right back into their windows, which technically, if it's within 50 feet of a residential area, it's not supposed to be even a lit sign. An internally lit sign at all. And I would say this, I think that the concern also comes with in the same way televisions keep getting bigger and they get it, they're getting cheaper, that technology usually translates to signage. So I so I think that the illumination and how and the brightness is really what becomes the concern, not only from the, the, the proximity to residential areas, but also because it becomes a, a distraction to drivers mm -hmm. in some ways. So I'd like to know what the terminology is. Are those LED signs? Like, can we be specific about them, or are they internally lit signs and we can just... Would it be better trying mm -hmm. to find some more general catch-all? So okay, as so the technology changes, lit, yeah. something comes with a better mouse track than what they Well, I think that it's larger cities, uh, you know, Dayton, for example, has redid their zoning code to address the issue of digital signage because it's becoming more popular and uh, advertisers like it, the sign companies like it. Um, and in fact, you know, 35 on the way out here at the Factory Road, there's a, a large, what they call gateway sign. Again, I, I'm not they sure. like TV screens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about things that look like that clock, you know? Um, I, if you want, I can read this about internally illuminated. Um, yeah. Signs that are internally illuminated have light shining through the surface of the sign. Typically, these either involve a rectangular shaped box sign or individual letters, channel letters, I don't know what you're thinking of, that are lit from inside. Neon signs may be considered internally illuminated as well. Internally illuminated signs can reduce readability and contribute to light pollution. Towns that allow internal illumination can have main streets and commercial areas that seem to glow at night. Mm -hmm. It is difficult to measure and track the light pollution from these types of signs, but the cumulative visual effect over time can be negative. One way to reduce some of these impacts is to require that the background color be dark and the lettering light or white. This design approach results in much less glare and glow being given off from the entire sign surface instead focusing the light through just the transparent letters. Okay. I mean, that's something I want to get specific that way, too. I like that definition of internally lit signs. So you think we want us, instead of saying neon signs, say internally lit? Oh, I think internally illuminated. That was already internally illuminated. illuminated. Yeah, absolutely. Since it includes him. All right, 
moving on, then um, 1266.0, what will be 03, which was 05. <clears throat> Uh, the paragraph on permitted signs. It says, it talks about the total number of signs per principal building on any lot. And I, my question was if we should add the word permitted signs in the front of these. And the reason I'm asking this is because we have a section that allows signs do not have a permit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no language in here that talks about how, I mean, how many of those signs are allowed. Some of, some of those do have a definition, like one, it'll say you can only have one, but not all of them. So you could have multiple directional signs with arrows, enter, exit, with logos, and shipping and receiving, or different words, but there's no, there's no uh, total cumulative number as to how many of, the, of those you can have. And there's no requirement for people to ask for a permit for those. Um, so when I have, a, I have a situation right now, which um, we're gonna have to have a variance on because um, they're basically, a big multi-tenant building uh, with a lot of land and they're restricted to a total of three signs uh, with only being two of two, two, two types. So but a development sign, is that one of them? Uh, or not a development, mm -hmm. the uh, business center? Yes. A business, a business center sign, and then, um, and I'm wanting to also ask them for the purpose. I think we kind of have already um, ground sign. We've had a definition of ground sign and a freestanding sign, but they're kind of one and the same. One has a base, one doesn't have a base. So for the purposes of this code, I would not want to count those as two different types. I would think ground and freestanding could be, could be considered one type. Okay, I want to double check that. But I don't know if, if it's only, it's in B, in B or I district, in any business or industrial district, a maximum of two types of signs and three total signs per principal building shall be permitted on any lot, regardless of the number of tenants. Okay, so, can I, sorry. So my question is, if, I, if we put the word permitted in front of it, then we're only talking about the permitted signs. If I have to count other signs that don't require a permit, I mean, or do I? I don't know if I'm supposed to. It's just, I don't think you should. And I'm wondering, does this, like King's Yard, for example, has a business district sign, right? It's all on one lot. It, our, I mean, they have a ground sign, basically. Yeah, they have a ground sign, mm -hmm. right? And then each storefront has a sign. Mm -hmm. Would they only be allowed three total permitted signs for Which that means? whole building? Because those are nameplate signs. Nameplate signs don't require a permit. Um, if you look at So 126605, which is signs not requiring permits, a nameplate sign is a sign identifying the occupants of the building and or their profession, provided the sign does not exceed two square feet in area, and it can be it must be attached to an exterior exterior building wall. But not probably some of those do exceed two square feet. Yeah, I would think so. And that's isn't that your problem at the other, I'm just guessing, but there are nameplate signs that are on a, one building identifying a business, a tenant in a business, you know, in an industrial. So like, that's what I'm saying, like, King's Yard under this, 
not be allowed because it's one building with several lots of tenants. Right. Well, can I just to clarify that? That would be only one type of sign if they're permitted to be of different sizes. Because what you're saying is three total, total though. Three total signs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, oh, that's, that's where the that's the I problem. Was, I'm hearing that. Yeah. But, but by putting in the language permitted, that allows the zoning administrator to say, okay, if it's a sign that doesn't require a permit, it's not counted within the three. Right. Which mm -hmm. would make sense. Right. But if it's bigger than two square feet, then it has to have a permit. Because it's no longer the neighborhood. Right. What's, what's the purpose of that? I think probably the intent is just to see you have a bunch of clutter, a bunch of, you know, signs covering every surface. But I the way it's written in the application, it, I don't think it works it, very well. It doesn't well. really, especially when you look downtown, I mean, you might have several businesses on the lot. I mean, if you're talking about yeah, it's, I permitted mean, building it, per, permitted, I mean, there's a lot of buildings where there's more than one, where there's more than one business. Yeah, I mean, I mean all, no of, is all of Dayton Street, street. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, all, all the downtown. Yeah. And, and where Wavelengths is? I mean, and I only put the permit in there as a way to try to relax a little bit, but if you want to even go further with I mean, that, it seems that's like, it seems like yeah. regardless of the number of tenants, it just doesn't make sense. I know. So could we take that out and make some provision about unless one, there's one per business, one per business, something like that, one per tenant? You guys, yeah. I mean, that makes it's uh, it's already happening in every certain mm -hmm. places. Yeah. yeah, only you get signs. <laughs> Nobody gets. So, so what I'm hearing is, if, if I have a, want to build, and I have more than three tenants, if it's just a name plate, I'm okay. If it's a two square feet. Mm -hmm. Two square feet, mm -hmm. okay. Which to me seemed reasonable to, that, you know, if, if I had space that I could at least put my, my name on some people know what it is. You know what I mean? Um, but to have a building that I can only call a Sims building with a sign bigger than two feet or whatever, is, is that what I'm hearing? You want to, to possibly limit it just to the identification? No, the it, it's, it's really, if, say the say you wanted to put a ground sign in and you wanted to put all of your tenants' names on that one sign, that would be permitted. Permitted. Yeah. Okay. And That's you could good. have up to three signs, even if there was right. one tenant or is it just you, up to three permitted signs. Mm -hmm. And as many allowed signs. And two types, and like two a ground and a wall. Okay. Yeah. So you've got two ground signs and one wall sign, or two wall signs and one ground sign. Where well, that doesn't work is when you have six tenants. Yes, six tenants. You have King's Yard. Where you have shop after shop after shop. Your one sign is already taken. Mm -hmm. That means only two of those tenants can have a sign larger than just the name plate. On the, the, the long building. Yeah. On the building. Further, oh, anywhere. A further door. Yeah. Anywhere. Anywhere else. Uh, That's where it doesn't work. Yeah. Even if it's a name. No, they don't have a name. Like as long as it's less the, than two square feet. Okay. okay. Well, well, you know, see, that's the thing. There isn't any language in here that says that. We're not to include those. I mean, we should say that we're not. In, that those. That's why I put the okay, word permitted. Yeah. So that that's that. makes that solves that problem. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, because otherwise, another right person now. could interpret that to say it could go out there and look at that property and says, well, you know, you have 
you have a nameplate sign, an address sign, and two directional signs, you're already at, you know. Okay. And so it sounds like what we're talking about, what Rosa said, is, is that we would change it so that they could have additional signs for the, the total number of tenants they have. If you want to do that, that's, that is, um, I don't, uh, well, it's, it's that or enforce what's there. That's, I mean, that's the decision. Well, it sounds reasonable that if you have six shops, six businesses, mm -hmm. that they each need to have a sign. Right. That you can't limit it, say only, you know, two are going to get a sign and there'll be one that everybody's going to be listed on, but all the other four are not permitted to have a sign by their shop. I think we're in agreement. So and that's where we ran into the issue on Dayton Street with the, with the 314 Dayton building. I mean, people were just putting signs out in the yard yes. everywhere, and it was looking as a visual okay. clutter. So, you know, That's I the, talked with the owner of the, mm -hmm. just, and I talked with the owner of the property and said, look, we'll just have one brown sign, and everybody can have their little slats of their business in it, and then add one that once that sign is done, they can't have any more of those little individual signs. I mean, that, that'll work. But that's not B1. No. Yeah, that's a residential area. See, I, I look at that example as the uh, the 111 building downtown Dayton. They have 111 on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But everything else, you go inside and then there's another flag that identifies who's in what room. But, they, but, but, but as people advertise, they, they advertise as sets and sets of offers. The one on the eleven building. I think it was but that's a different sort of clientele, like where uh, our businesses are. Are no, tourist no, based. I was, just, I was just talking about in the residential, the, yeah. the old uh, school house. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'd yeah, say that's different. Yeah, and I, downtown. And, downtown yeah. And as far as everything else, I mean, it pretty much tells you, it, you know, uh, what's allowed. And it's only allowed one ground sign in, in uh, residential. Right. Whereas um, all other zones, one per street front each and that kind of thing. It's just the BRI district where it's, and it's a little bit. I, I just I think that maybe if we do put permitted in front of it, it that will help. Permitted in front of where? In front of um, where it's underlined. Where it's the, yeah. yeah. So that would mean then the signs that are that you don't have to have a permit for, they would could be. have them at this. They're not counted. They're not, not counted, counted towards the total. Yes. So does that mean that uh, if uh, you miss the boat in, in terms of the number of tenants, then you're stuck with the name plate and or some other permitted sign? No, I think we, we should change the regardless of number of tenants as well. It's a different issue. Does it give you some wiggle room if you uh, make reference to uh, exterior entrances to the business? Because that's a, that's a whole different animal than the Dayton Street situation where it's one building and people are trying to advertise exterior to the building, whereas Kings Yard you have multiple buildings in a single, multiple businesses in a single building, but they all have exterior entrances. Well, I I don't think we can use the old schoolhouse as a example. It's in a residential district. We're talking about B or I. Right. That's I'm right. just saying. Yeah. Regardless of where it was, it's two different ways of looking at it. One has businesses in the interior of a single building with oh, a separate right. entrance, mm -hmm. and the other has multiple entrances in a single building. And does that give you some wiggle room in terms of being able to say, under these conditions, it could be permitted to allow more signs or something? I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, like um, where the mattress store is, right? 
like there's multiple businesses in that building, they would only be allowed one main sign and then a name, or three, three total permitted signs and then name plates. Yes, I mean, in, in the suggestion I'm sort of offering, that's one structure with one entrance, and so you'd have to follow the way that it looks here. But if you had a one structure with three different entrances and three different businesses, that perhaps you could look at it differently. Per, per main entrance. That's a good idea. <coughs> and I think by putting the permitted in front of it, I don't think that this is going to come up that often. I mean, so because it doesn't come up that often, if it needs to go for a variance, it, they have a really good case. So, okay, so Denise, how would you how would you write this now? We've talked about a couple different options. So how would this read with what you're suggesting? That uh, sentence, in any B or I district? Um, I, I think that regardless of the number of tenants is kind of, <coughs> I don't know that that's really necessary. We could strike that and just say a maximum of two types of permitted signs and three total permitted signs per principal building shall be allowed on any lot. And remember, we have certain, these some of these buildings downtown are zoned. I mean, even though they look like they're all one building, they're not. Mm -hmm. There's, and there's individual buildings with individual lots in, 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 in different owners. But some of them don't. Some of them don't have individual lots. They're all one. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, this is upstairs. Yeah. Well, and maybe, do you want to say per principal building and take out the lot? Part. You know, would that help? You already have a building in there. Mm -hmm. Shall be, yeah, shall be allowed, period. Imagine <coughs> two types of permitted signs and three total permitted signs per principal building shall be allowed. Okay. There is a variance process. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there, there are circumstances that are unique. There aren't that many properties where this issue would seem to come up. And if the idea is having uniformly and some level of control, then you trust the planning commission to grant variances as, as necessary and appropriate. Be easy. So and where would it? Where are the places where it would be relevant in terms of the current? King Shard, Mowers. I mean, no the, works. Do we really want to say you can only have? I, I'm not. I'm, I'm a little unclear at this point where we're at, but if we're saying you can only have, I mean, that's a big property. It's got they're already, two yeah, they're already under that. I mean, I've had, the, they're only allowed to do what this, this has been in existence for a while. We've had people that have come and they're yeah, wanting to say, we've had to say no. Do we really, do they, should they really have to cut before the BCA? Well, it's not that much fun, actually. But I think if we say, is there a purpose to it? But I think if we say for principal building, that's a different, that's a different interpretation. They have multiple buildings out there. I see. But right so you're now, it is there. okay. Yes. Right now, the lot. Isn't a the lot part isn't is what messes me up. Right. Okay. Okay. So if you give them the lot, then that gives you more yeah. flexibility. Yeah. Gives me more okay. flexibility with right. the building. Okay. So it's purpose. Okay. Okay. So every building could have a ground sign and two um, wall, signs. wall signs or three wall signs. Would that be in, would they still have well, to come to? No. Three total permitted. Yeah, but they have more than three tenants in one what building, in that one seven. building. They might. And, and you know, hang on, I don't know what the business is, but they may not even, like, aren't looking to have people okay. particularly. Right. I mean, they have a sign out front, they have a business center or ground sign out front that names all their tenants. So. Well, what I would not want to see is every, every time there's a new business that comes in, they have to come to BZA to get a sign for the yeah, business. Yeah. That's, a, yeah. that's a bit onerous in my mind. All right, well, I'll leave. I'll put permitted in and take out on any lot regardless of the number of tenants. Great. Okay, that's great. Okay, and then I, I 
would suggest that we change three to four. Three, three signs to four. Yeah. If we're going to keep this language, with you know, take out regardless of the number of yes, it's still just two types of signs. Yeah, two types of signs for total permit per principal building. And why, shall be why four? It's more than three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't So, because because that would because if there was because that lessens the likelihood of people needing to go to BZA. Just a little bit, you know. Okay. So, would you would you give a maximum of three types of permits? Because I'm thinking of a projecting sign. Lots of times, people instead of the wall sign do the little projecting one. Kind of hangs off the. That's a different type than what we consider to okay. be a wall. Three types. Okay. All right. Then moving on. Um, under uh, 1266, then what's going to be 05? Signs not requiring a permit. Do we want to say anything? Uh, I mean, it does. All, it already says. Just a second. Um, it says that the following sign shall not require a permit as otherwise required by Section 126606, but shall be subject to all other applicable general requirements of this chapter. So. Um, When you look at 1266, um, there, I mean, if you go like to the, what's going to be like 1266, what will be 126603, well, it doesn't even need to be because it pretty much says, it, I'm sorry, it pretty much says, like for example, um, a, a directional sign. It's pretty specific. It can't say it exceed two square feet in area, three feet in height, has to be set back from the street, may contain a logo or trademark, but not the name or commercial message, and can say enter, exit, one way, do not enter, similar traffic directions. Um, a garage sign, a state sales sign, it, it, it's pretty specific. It tells you how many you can have. Do so you have the limit there on the uh, time should be, it could be up in terms of when it needs to be removed? Yeah. It's do, we wanna, nice do we want to include something like that on the political signs also? That's in state law. On private property? I think political signs, yeah. Or I, mean, I know we will stick up on public property all the time. I thought that's where it applies. Well, well, no, you can apply. Well, we don't enforce it. I don't know if anybody enforces it with their city growth area. Mark, I don't know one year they do. Yeah. 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 But I do think that there's laws, state laws, about even on your private property. Are you, I could not am I right? I could not find anything. Really? They, they told me to, 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 to check the local ordinance. Oh. It has to be local ordinance, and there's a question as to whether or not um, that can be regulated, you know, whether or not a community can regulate that more political speech. Yeah. There, I believe there's a case out of New Jersey or somewhere that, that I think there's a challenge going on. It's red, it's, a, it's foggy in my brain about the local ordinance that has two, no more than two signs, and how long they can be up. Um, so there, there may be a case that's going to provide guidance on that. Um, we don't want to be the trial case. <laughs> well, I, I don't think that we would. I mean, but you, 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 when you see it more and more. Well, right now, Chris, we say no more than two signs are permitted for lots of corner lot, and we, I mean, we restrict the number. You say one sign unless it's a corner lot. Yeah. Per candidate or something. For each candidate or issue, right. so you can have 25 signs. <laughs> Just not all of the same. There's 25 candidates. Yeah. 
And is that too restrictive? It's complicated reason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think it's at, at some level, I think there's an expectation that everyone to behave reasonably. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. If you trust that common sense will prevail, and if not, then we deal with it. <laughs> so in, in, in reading this, Okay, so let me back up a second here and say under the 1284.08, which was definitions, in that I only put this, the definitions of the signs that are permitted. And that, that eliminated, like, it, it took it down from 21 definitions of signs down to 15. And then what I did was where it needed to be um, explained in more detail, I put that definition into signs not requiring permits or uh, prohibited signs. I added definitions into that. Definition. So the prohibited signs are no longer the definitions? No, they're, in, they're under the prohibited yeah. section. Yeah. Should, and Chris, should they be in both places? Well, I, again, I, I think that if somebody is looking at signs and they have this list of what it is, I don't think that it has to be listed again in the definitional okay. section. Okay. But yeah. there are, we should go back and look, whatever we decide to do here, there probably are some definitions that ought to be in there, but not every one. Okay. Um, the last part, and then we'll get into that with definitions. The last. If I can just have, yes, if you may have one, of the, I mean, one thing we can do is simply say, for sign definition C, section so again, we just have a list of 605. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 126608 has to do with, because um, this, one, this one's been uh, messing with me here lately. Uh, we have we didn't change, we did not say that you cannot have pole signs and in this body. That was already a given that pole signs were not to be allowed. But the ones that are there were grandfathered in. The language, though, talked about an obsolete sign. And an obsolete sign being well, if they're no longer functional, if they've been abandoned then they get a 30 days notice of non-compliance and then the, they have to be removed one way or the other, either by the owner or by the village. Um, but then it goes into, then it goes down to fees and then all of a sudden it goes into non-conforming signs, yeah. which really is the pole sign. So it's a little bit, you really have to really know this code to understand what what's what it's saying, and it's it's a little confusing in that it says um, that non-conforming signs can't be altered, expanded, enlarged, or extended. However, they can they can be maintained and repaired. But then it goes on to say, for the purposes of this chapter, a non-conforming sign may be diminished in size or dimension, or the copy of the sign amended or changed without jeopardizing non-conforming status. Well, I mean, so what is, which is it? I mean, because I had said to someone that, you know, you can have a ground sign, but the pole sign, which has been abandoned for a long time, is not going to be, a, be in use. But then I found this little section C that says, oh, well, they can amend the sign and still have it because it was grandfathered in before. Which so B and C are kind of the full cut for B and C, and then um, and twelve sixty six oh eight above it, and just obsolete signs. It's just all kind of. Uh, I think they're everything saying that with, with each other. Altered, altered, expanded, enlarged, or extended are di is different than diminished in size, dimension, or the copy of the sign amended or changed. Those are different things. They are different. So well, except for altered, altered is the same. I mean, altered. altered is that, but that, the that can be copy of the sign is amended. 
not the sign, just the copy, just the, the words on it. I, I mean, I don't know what constitutes abandoning a sign either, you know. <laughs> Does that mean that the yeah, I don't, I don't business think I'm, isn't, is no longer there? I mean, are, I guess like... Well, I, I think the village has not sent, followed this process, then that sign's not abandoned because the process hasn't been followed. Yeah. When, the does, when does this become tick, tick, tick? I mean, like Section the bowling alley sign. Oh, the so we've had so we have a sign that's been in beta for years. Once we send a, a letter, a uh, certified letter of non-compliance, they've got 30 days. Are we going to be? I mean, is does the village want to take down a bowling alley sign? I don't. Yeah. Personally. I do because it's. It's, it's not maintained. It's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, now, someone can call them out of it. <laughs> but, you know, there, there, there's, you know, as a piece falls off, whatever, mm -hmm. they can fix it. Plus, it's not, you know, someone may think it's a historical piece. But the building that's here now is not that old. So the sign is really represents the lot there, but the lot is for sold vehicles and for stored vehicles. You find there's just no relationship between the sign and. Well, and then why isn't the village telling us to take it down? Uh, Bigger fish to fry, probably. Well, for years there was no zoning in the trailer. Right. <laughs> right. And I'm part time, so it's <laughs> only so much one person can do, you know. Um, that really, you're going to start getting into. I mean, they if could, you're going to get into the violations code. You're going to have to have somebody that just specifically is looking at that. I think. But if they were given a letter, in in this case, right, mm -hmm. they could um, uh, be. They could maintain it. And it would become a non-conforming sign instead of an obsolete sign. They would have 60 days to do that. Could they, if that business doesn't exist anymore, isn't that in itself makes it? I mean, do, do we have any requirement that the sign actually corresponds with something that exists? No. No. Um, uh, Oh, look at number B. Look at number obsolete signs B. A sign which no longer identifies a use, product, business, or entity located on the property, but is otherwise in conformity, may remain in place if the sign face is completely covered or obscured by blank panel. So it doesn't have a blank patch in it. No longer identifies a bona fide business conducted, and it can stay for 120 days. That, that, that assumes that the sign is not being used for artistic purposes. It assumes it's just staying a nuisance and not identifying anything. Because I think I just thought that's where you were going, Rose. Was if they were affected, if that were identified as you've got to rectify the situation within X number of days, that they might do something with the sign that was. Neat, but didn't necessarily have to identify a business. Was if it didn't have any words on it, if it only had symbols, right? Yeah, so right now it's got a bowling ball on it, it's full of things. Yeah, but it does, does it say words? It says bowling alley. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if it said something else, you know. Well, and so this, and just to throw some more say into the ears. I, um, <laughs> yeah, I was, right. well, since, you know, I thought it was going to be a quick meeting, and uh, mm -hmm. we're past that at this point. So I counted the whole sides of town, and there's only two, I think, in B1, Peaches and Speedway. And then south of town, there's three. There's the Bowling Alley, there's the Mexican restaurant, and there's 
the bank. And oh, yeah, I guess that is over six feet. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about here is five sons yeah. in town. That are non conforming. Well, that's right, well, because yeah. I mean, there's no definition except for Except the bowling sons. alley one is really obsolete. for, it's obsolete. It's not for me and obsolete. Yes. Yeah. Well, the Mexican one is kind of too. Oh, Jesus. But based on this language, you know, if he change, if he, I've sent him a sign for it. If he changes the, the face from black and puts his business name on there, he'll be all right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can keep it. Right. Based on this place, which was buried somewhere, not where the obsolete signs are, it's just like. And actually, Ooh. the bowling alley sign would be fine too, as long as they took the bowling alleys off of it. Or just put not. <laughs> not, not a. Not a. <laughs> it says it has to be obscured by a blank panel. Oh, no, 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 it wouldn't though because it wouldn't be. If it says bowling alley, it does have to be bowling. Well, but not if it says not bowling alley. Yes, because it's words. If somebody puts for sale up, yeah. that would not be it. No longer identifies a bona fide business. Yeah, it's weird. But in B, under the obsolete signs, B, the last uh, sentence, um, the sign, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, unless identifying a new use product, business, or entity located on that property. So they can use the bowling alley, the, uh, the placard, the, the thing, and just put in a new name. Yeah. Well, there was a movement afoot for some time. Laura Curlis really wanted that to be a gateway sign that said something like, you know, in that same style, Welcome to Yellow Springs or some sort of thing, just because it is such a neat art sign. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful. Yeah, it brings us back to the days of the driving and the bowling alley. So. Um, okay, and so finally, I mean, I think I'll, I'll play with this a little bit, we'll come back. Hope, I think we'll be at a point where we can have an actual public hearing for the next. Can we move non conforming signs? Can we what? Can we move non conforming signs? Um, and put the fees below that? Fees below that? Yeah. Yes. Or fees maybe should go with permit, sign permits, shouldn't sign permits, fees, or sign permits, application procedures, fees, inspection and maintenance, non-conforming signs. Sorry to move everything around. I'm just full of that, actually, sand. Well, that does make sense order. though, I agree. Say that again. Well, well, just put the fees under the application procedure. Well, well why, why would non-conforming come right after the Obsolete. Yeah. No, after permitted, the sign's not requiring a permit. Mm -hmm. I'm just one, you know, because we got signs not before, oh, yeah. but then we got sign permits, which is a different thing. A different, right? yeah. When, when you talk about non conforming signs, that's a. Mm -hmm. To put it right after the ones that are committed. Right. Okay. Did you get that? Through? No, I didn't, yeah. so let's read okay, so say that. Leave the fees alone. Well, wait a minute. Non okay. So non-conforming signs will be 1266.07. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, we can have 06. 04 permits. Oh, going with four permits? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wait a minute. So, so it's going to go. Wait a minute. I, I still think inspection and maintenance and then non-conforming signs. If it's before or after. Just okay, we've got purpose, general provisions, then we have permitted signs. And then you're saying what now? Should something should go in between that or not? Well, no. Permitted signs. And then well, prohibited we signs not required permits. Signs and not I think permitted. some of us were saying we thought then the non conforming signs, signs should come, come there. there. After so, Signs not requiring right. permits. Okay. okay. Uh, so that would be non-conforming signs. Okay. 
because if I and, and, and then you'd have sign permits, application procedure, inspection and maintenance and fees. Yes. Correct. Okay. I still think fees needs to go with the application procedure or with sign permits. The, okay. the inspection and maintenance can be between those things. And or just put especially make this last. Yeah. yeah. You could, if you wanted, but make the new application procedure just put it in the slash fees, and then include that as a subsection, yeah. and just merge the two and eliminate the separate. So fees term. would come under application. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 So yeah. We, it, the fee, the word fees, would be placed in the title, so yeah. everybody would know. Okay, here's the application yeah. process of what it's going to cost me. Yeah. Exactly. So. Um, okay. So, so the order of permitted signs, prohibited signs, signs not requiring permits, and non-conforming signs, is that okay in that order then? Yes. yes. Okay. And then uh, inspection and maintenance for 126608 though, does tend to talk about obsolete, obsolete signs. Um, well, that's fine. That's fine yeah, because yeah. then that's yeah. after yeah. The, you know we look at we see what's not conforming first and then we go to obsolete after. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good. That'll work. So are we is inspection and maintenance still after sign permits and application procedure and fees? Yes. 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 And that makes sense because it tells you what you can and what you want to do yeah. and what you need to do. Yeah. I kind of do what I suppose. There's, there's some natural logic to that. It's yeah. And then the definitions, we need to just add a definition of permitted signs. Okay, so right. that's the last thing I want to look at real quick here. We'll just go over the, the definition section part. Um, and I just under um, prohibited signs 126604. Oh, just say see this section in the definitions. Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, 126604 prohibited signs. Mm -hmm. um, it, I just added a little bit more of a definition in that state. This balloon signs was that definition was in the back. Some of some of the definitions were in the back. Some were. But I just wanted to further explain under prohibited. So everything that's underlined was was added in. So pole signs. Right. It just before it just said pole signs. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking that maybe if I say uh, I should probably say that is that is six higher than six feet. On a pole sign? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you can have a, a freestanding sign. But it can't be. If it's six feet or less, it's 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 it allowed. Put the six feet in. Okay. Higher than six feet. Okay. No more than six feet in height. Uh, over six oh, feet. Yeah. That's right. For over six feet for pole signs. Because these are ones that aren't allowed. Well, wait a minute. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. The the thing. The thing that made the pole signs, uh, the reason I added that in there was we, a pole sign is different in a, because it's mounted on a round pole, a square tube with no um, any type of secondary support. So that's kind of why I wanted to get that in there clear too. So it doesn't need to be more than six feet? It just has one support member. That's what the pole sign, and that's not allowed. Have to have Yes, and can it be less than six feet and just have a single support and still be prohibited? I don't know. Is it a ground sign if it's less than six what, feet what tall? What if I did that and I had two posts in there? Then you're okay. And it's more than six feet tall, it's fine? Let's see. Is that a distinction or a difference really? Well, the distinction is then suddenly that becomes a freestanding sign or a ground sign. And, and it's we, not allowed. And we have, restriction, we, we have restrictions on height for, oh, yeah. for that. 
So do I need to not even say it's over 60? Just leave it as? I know you're okay. No bull signs at all. That's right. That's what that says. So if you want to have a okay. All right. Is that okay? Does that make sense? So um, then I add the definition of billboard signs and off-premise signs under prohibited. And then under signs not requiring permits, um, for directional signs, uh, directional sign, under that I add signs used to direct motor vehicle, bicycle, and or pedestrian traffic entering or leaving business establishments or shopping centers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just well, I took that from where it was elsewhere and put it in. And then political signs. Um, I didn't know, and I just looked at other places where they've had that, because you know sometimes they'll, like someone who has a big property, then they'll like litter their, you'll see their name like 10 times, sure. or 10 signs in a row, and I didn't, and I didn't know if we wanted to have language in there that said only one sign for each candidate or issue per lot, however two signs permitted at the lot is a quarter lot, just okay. to keep that, that litter, I mean, you know, you can have multiple candidates on that lot, but just not the same person ten times. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, you think only legally allowed to do that? Uh, well, maybe not. You, um, you, could have, you could have 12 different candidate signs. In other words, you could have three people for the school board, three people for council, three people for the town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you only, can have, you only can have one sign with your name <laughs> if you're running. That's what we're saying, but I don't know if, if we can legally do that on a personal private property. You know, it, right now, there's that kind of litter in the public right away at right. a major corner in town, so I don't know. Well, and you know, part of it is you know, yeah, one, okay. one expects the okay. candidates to go and get their size. When yeah, the yeah, it's only a short term yeah. thing. Um, the, what I will say is that when you start getting into what's legal and what's not when it comes to political speech. It is so fact dependent, I can't give a definitive answer without knowing what the fact pattern is. Um, and We're not asking for a permit, so it's maybe just if somebody's complaining that somebody has 10 signs in the start. I think it's just, a, I think you start with a request and you just see where it goes. And, yeah, this yeah. looks like this is guidance. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it gives me after this. Well, we're not restricting the time period, which I really thought that there was yeah, some I, I zone. Think you, you think we could put one in. I, I, I don't think, think I mean, the election after. cycle seems yeah, to have gotten yeah. so long. Yeah, that's but. Because that's when I always took my time. That's because you're conscientious. <laughs> there, but, there, but there is a time frame somewhere, but I, I don't know if it's, in, if it's in the zoning code or if it's in another part of our code. It might be if it's in the county. You know, it may be in the code that caught up the, uh, the yeah. codified ordinances yeah. under nuisance or something. It I might know. be. It was Literally. somewhere else where it was like there was a date in August where it could start commence. It was yeah. like three <coughs> days ahead. Yeah. And then it had to be so much time yeah. after five to seven but days or something. My, my suggestion would be that if, if this body could give some direction on what you're interested in, language that you're interested in seeing, and then Denise and I can work on finding something to submit to you to consider. If, if we already have a nuisance <coughs> about the time period, should we add that in here or no? I, I, it would it make sense that most yeah. people would go to the sign. <coughs> okay. So are. let's find out what those rules are if we have any. If we don't have any, I'm comfortable with the language that Denise has added. And if we do, we can just put C section whatever. Nuisance mm -hmm. or littering. Well, my suggestion would be to expressly put it in there. Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, there's nothing more maddening. I mean, as a lawyer, it drives me crazy when I have to continually cross reference and I can't figure it out because it's not in one place. Um, and we want to make a user friendly uh, document. But my question is do you want to see some, whatever language that we have that within the village, the limits, you would like to see that in under political signs? If we cannot find any language, would you like to see a draft with that language? We like what Denise has put right here. Yeah. Yes, let's start with that. 
Right. But, but, but well, if there's no limiting language for days, 60 days, you know, 30 days before. I would like to see some. Would you like to see after, a graph that yes, has limiting days? Yes, have limiting days. You know, like two days to remove it or one week or two weeks to remove it after the election. I mean, see. yeah, we're, we're putting it in here on other stuff, like uh, yep. real estate, they've the got to remove it 30, so within 30 no days left. after it's at the property yeah. sold. Right. So, okay. All right. Okay. I'll that. So then. after the election. I get that. All right. And then, let's see, the last one part of that, then, is um, actually looking at the 1284, did we put that in there, 1284? Yeah. 128408, which is signs. And we just simply have only thing in there now is the definitions of what is allowed. And before it was just it was just um, sign. Um, <coughs> Oh shoot, that was a little bit confusing because um, it in, in the thing it's a sign like for example sign balloon or sign uh, sign balloon uh, is already underlined. Some of these are already underlined. So sign sign canopy is already underlined. So just kind of ignore that part and then just look at the definition uh, under like sign canopy. If it's not underlined, it's what is was already there. And then if it's if it's crossed out, it's what I'm suggesting we take out and instead add in. Okay, and just being a little more specific in uh, what what a canopy sign is versus an awning sign. Um, there we didn't have an awning sign in the definitions. Um, didn't we but we did have a projecting we had a projecting in canopy but not awning so I added awning completely into that and I counted them all up and ch double checked them so ooh there are 15 types of permitted signs um, if you look at your little table well, where's projecting um, oh, sign projecting uh, if you look at the little table if you, and count across the top of that, at the, even though there's um, like nine, twelve. There's, But if you recall, there's also that section below it, B, table B. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you add table A signs and table B signs, and you get a total of 15. Okay. And so so this, this is table A. That's table A. And then? Table B is, um, nothing has changed on it. So that's table. still table A. This is table B. Oh, okay. Which is all districts. All right. So it's three more. But, but I, I'm just, so I'm, this first page that we were talking about, it's not yeah. where you, you use words instead of letters. Yeah, that's yes. Like this. Yes. Yeah. Would it make sense to put Brown and freestanding, for example, and say A? We are. Okay. Yeah, All right. but well, I'm still working with Melissa on okay. that. We're just going to like maybe put okay. A, B, C, okay. we, we weren't done with okay. it. So you're, you're going to use the, the, the okay, I got it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we'll do that, and then, um, but there's, even though know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine across here, nine, 10, 11, 12, there's actually 12 signs on here, there's three more in table B, for a total of 15, and that's what's in the definitions. Our freestanding signs. Boom, yeah, and that's it. Okay. I have a question. Um, in the definitions, what's now seven 
sign pre-standing. Um, I guess it, it's possible that, I guess like, when do we, what, when do we refer to freestanding signs? Because it says supported by one or more poles. One. So it's not a pole sign, but it. Oh yes, yeah, so that is B. Oh yeah. But Two or more poles. Are freestanding signs allowed? Yes, they're considered the same as a. They were. I found in the in the text there was sometimes. The word freestanding was interchanged with ground, okay, but, so but yet the definition was was different. Freestanding meant two. I mean, meant like it was just one like, or more poles. So oh, that we'll make it change. two or more. We'll make yeah. Glad you caught that. It is still less than six feet tall though. This does not say less than six feet. Does. But it does in. It does in the yeah. No, See, we have to remember that the definition is just kind of defining what it is. But as far as the 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 restrictions, you're going to find that in that table. Take type A. It's just type A. I don't I don't know if you mean two separate definitions. It's not a def the fact that. It's Less than six feet tall, just a, a restriction on. No, I know, system. but what I'm saying is, why do we have seven and nine in the definitions when right. there it's referred to at the same time in type A ground sign freestanding? Because they are different in that the freestanding is like um, someone who just puts two puts a sign up with two poles in the ground. Yeah. But a ground sign is a has like a built base. You wouldn't see the the. Yeah, but are those both have the same restrictions? Yeah, and that's why I'm in the one. I think it was actually Chris's suggestion before is to put reference at C freestanding or C yeah. ground sign, okay. which I referenced that in the table, um, which was section. Uh, type like type A ground sign. I put in parentheses freestanding. C ground sign. Yeah. C freestanding sign. It says in sign. The on a foundation resting on the ground. Isn't that what a ground sign is? That's a ground sign. Right. It but if that, like say you know uh, say they, somebody builds a brick <coughs> brick. Thing, and then the signs on top of They the reference each other, these two definitions. Mm -hmm. Why do we have two definitions? Because, <coughs> simply because in the in other places in the code, sometimes they were interchanging freestanding and oh, ground. Okay. And I wanted it to be clear that, that we consider that still, even though it is, it may be built differently, we're still considering it to be one type okay. of sign. Okay. It's easier to put the definition in than just to go back and try, try to write there all the other lines. Yeah, I mean, and you guys had signed ground already as a freestanding yeah. sign supported by a base, um, and then you had freestanding as any sign not attached, which is supported by one or more poles or braces. Um, and it's funny because when I looked in the um, APA uh, Planning Association's definition, they actually had it the reversed. They had a ground sign being the, the two poles and the freestanding. I know, it was weird. Okay, so, I don't know. I didn't want to change too much, so I just so went ahead. Instead of changing the definition of a freestanding sign to be two poles, I really think we should, I do think that we should add the height requirement on a pole sign, what a pole sign is. Like, change. What we were talking about earlier, and we decided not to add higher than six feet. To so then you're saying you're saying signs. you okay to have a ground sign that just had one, one pole. pole as long as it's not higher than six feet. I don't see why not. Okay. I have no. Does it matter whether or not it's supported in the center? Or it might matter how big that one pool is. Even if it's under six feet, if it's the same size as the ones that are over six feet, that's pretty large. 
But if they put two posts, I mean, if it's allowed or... So what you're suggesting was is that we just, for the pole sign, prohibited sign definition, we say over six feet, and then we leave the definition alone for the freestanding sign. There's already requirements on the freestanding sign that it's not allowed to be taller than whatever it is. Yes, yeah, so all you would do there is, is just change the pole sign definition to add over yeah. six feet. To make, because right now they're in conflict. Where does it say in the six feet? It, it, it doesn't. doesn't. It only says it in the, uh, when you get into the, uh, before the tables, you have the section uh, under 1266.03, permitted signs, six feet max. It has type A ground sign, uh, okay, yeah, six feet maximum height. That was the only reason I didn't think I wanted to get into putting those kinds of things into the definition, right. because they're already here. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. But adding a differenti differentiating freestanding signs and pole signs is necessary. Right now. Is there an conflict? As it is. Well, uh, if you're not going to care if we have a pole sign, then I don't even know why we have to have it anywhere. No, I think she's. That's, that's not her point. I think her point is that is a, if a sign is less than six feet tall and it has one pole, then it cannot be allowed, even though it falls under the pole. It, right. It, that's what I'm saying. So why have it as an eliminating thing? You know what I mean? But a sign can't be above six feet under right. any circumstance. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and so there was a reason when the code was rewritten to eliminate pole signs. Right. Yeah, but pole signs right now. Pole signs, the definite where it says pole signs aren't allowed, it doesn't. Pole signs, a freestanding sign usually double face mounted on a round pole, square tube, or other fabricated member without any type of, type of secondary support could, is not allowed under any circumstances, even if it's under six feet. And so, what I'm saying is that means a freestanding sign that's under six feet with one pole is a pole sign and right now it says in the definitions sign freestanding supported by one or more poles so we yes. change we have to change one or the other yes yes so i'm suggesting that we change pole signs like we were discussing earlier so that you would allow a pole sign if it's under six feet it would be a freestanding sign. It wouldn't be a pole sign. Because There's no such thing as a pole sign. Pole, right. yeah. Yeah. But right. it wouldn't be in the, we're defining pole signs. Yeah. See, because that's, this is so confusing, because that's why the, the old definition was it's a freestanding sign that doesn't, there's nothing, other than the pole, there isn't anything underneath it. Yeah. Okay, but the freestanding sign and ground sign all had to be down in the, down to the ground and and we don't have that around town I mean if you look at like freestanding the old one it was any sign not attached to a building or wall which is supported by one or more poles of braces or which rests on the ground or on a foundation resting on the ground is a practical matter with the six foot limitation in height does it would it ever make sense to have just a single pole supporting the sign and I, and I think that most of the time when you see a pole sign, the signs tend to be above six feet, which are the five exceptions or the six that you have. Is that, is that right, ma'am? Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm assuming that when pole signs were eliminated from your code or banned from your code, there was a determination made that aesthetically that, that there was something about that that you didn't like. I mean, must be. I, I don't well, know what those details because, are. Because because right now you have freestanding signs. You look over like all, all over. There's free, like um, yeah. the, what YS community physicians 
It's a freestanding sign on two, but it's on two poles. What, am I yeah. mishearing you, Rose? Are you just wanting this to say something like any sign of less than six feet not affects to a building, so that it's clear? Well, then. no, I'm I'm saying add to e pole signs and prohibited signs. You know that it's more than six feet high. Because, right, or, or, in definitions, we can change seven signs freestanding. Free yeah, that's just, that was, I guess, where I was looking just to say. And just say, supported by two, whole, two or more. Yeah, I think that's what we do. Okay. That's my recommendation. Okay. I agree. Okay. Okay, so, okay. I need to clarify one thing here because honestly, the way the sign freestanding is is descript descripted, it says uh, which is supported by one or more poles or braces, yes. or which rests on the ground. Okay, we're good. Right. Okay. So change that to a two. Make that two. Right. And then and then for pole, just add the. No, 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 no. That stays as is. We're just not allowing signs with one support. Yes. Correct. Okay. As a practical matter, if you want a big sign, you're not going to want to elevate it off the ground much anyway because you want to get as much square Yeah, but if, what about a small okay. sign? Right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I think we're, are we done with this for now? Okay. So we don't have any old business. So it sounds like, Jerry, you're going to talk to council about whether they want to be engaged in the sign discussion, gripping as it is. <laughs> Judith can attest to that as a witness. <laughs> and um, if they want to have some kind of session. In between, I don't know what, what your take on it was, but I didn't think they wanted to get involved in the sign discussion. Nobody discussed it. I don't believe it. Okay. I thought it was just going to be presented to council with a, just a brief explanation. Yeah, right. Okay. Submit it and council will do that. Yeah. Do a reading. Okay. So the next meeting, we'll have these yeah, changes made. We talked about the meeting. Having a meeting when Mary Ann brought up other substance within the within the whole the whole code, code not sign. Yes, sign. I'm hearing it. Yeah, I yeah. 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 right. Okay. So I think the next meeting could actually be a public hearing. I think so. So we'll get these changes made. Then we have a public hearing. Yeah. Great. And then from that, push this to council. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then I guess to, to go back to what Jerry talked about, this um, um, comprehensive plan review. I don't know if you guys have printed out the comprehensive plan and like that, but based upon what I heard in the last council meeting, they might come to us with some kind of request to, to dig into that a little bit. So it, it, Could we get copies of that? Yeah, is it? Is it online? It's probably on, yeah, on the website. On, yeah. It should be on the website. It should if it's much. really big, I think what we're saying, could you all put uh, it out for us? Pages. Um, it's a pretty big document. It's uh, pretty, yeah. Big. yeah. But it is on the web. Okay. It, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty big. I think I would like a hard copy. If you were going to do a, a, you're talking about doing a, a review of the, of the entire zoning code? No. We don't know. No. No. You don't know what the scope of the plan is. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is kind of what I heard were two separate things, but maybe I misheard at the meeting last time. One was Mary Ann saying, you know, there's some pieces here that yeah. I never agreed with. I would like us to look at them again throughout the code. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly that. where, but it would be, I would think, initiated by council members what those specific things are. That would be but great. But then the second thing was, Karen saying, you know, as we're making these changes, maybe we better look back at the comprehensive plan to be sure. Is it still, is, well, it's is been there's over five years. It, have things changed enough in what we're doing that we need to change some things to keep it all consistent in the comprehensive plan? So rather than just go piecemeal through the zoning code, let's start with the comprehensive let's plan. Look the, well, I don't know how council really can do it because you guys are making right. all these recommendations. So I would think you would look at the comp plan. That's yeah. well, and yeah, well, that, and it's not, that, I, that was what really with reference to the specific area that Marianne was referencing, which had to do with accessory dwelling units in front or backyard, and that yes. 
uh, it's relevant to the comprehensive plan in terms of how much infill do you want. So that's a particular yeah. section that. So I don't know which you know first. I just know every so often Karen wants to be referencing back and right. saying, have things changed enough? We need to make some changes in the comp plan to keep everything. Well, consistent. if we're supposed to be looking at it every five years and it's been six, I think we need yeah. to set up a, a, sure. like a, a working session. Comp what? Plan, but the council, I, I feel like you guys need to review the comp Oh, yeah. Plan. But then yeah. and you can bring whatever and you say, well, we see some inconsistencies. Maybe there should be some changes here or there. And I, yeah. Those recommendations. So, and that, that has to get. Um, you know, coordinated with the village manager because the village manager writes the comprehensive plan at your direction. I mean, that's that is a massive, massive undertaking which none of you are probably going to want to quit your jobs and do. Yeah. I mean, oh, honestly, it's the village manager that, that puts right. that all together with your so assistance. Just, so you, you would want to coordinate just, for you. I wouldn't get into I wouldn't get into a lot of detail, but if you see some big glaring inconsistencies that you bring those to, I'm not sure whose attention council or the staff first or whatever and then come back to them. But yeah, the thing where uh, Mary Ann was bringing up, should we really look at some of these things? I think it's going to be a bit here and a bit there throughout the, the zoning code. Not that we're going to go through the whole thing again and look at it care closely, but there's some specific things. Well, I mean, I think at this point we do need some direction from council mm -hmm. as to what you want us to be looking at. And I think before we meet with council, we should have a meeting uh, about that as well, what what we want to talk to council about, right. what our priorities are before, you know, council. Yeah, the only thing that, that you heard well, about but the only thing like is, is it, it, what I was starting to say the other night, and then we just stopped it, was if it was, depending on, I don't know what she has, because what she has, we might be able to address it on, it might not be something that requires tons and tons of she who input Marianne because maybe she if there's you know if there are some things that she would like to see different I mean they could be things that are simple enough that we can review and consider or or not yeah. I mean I, I don't I'm, I'm guessing at what it is she has um, it, yeah it seems maybe like she should go to like uh, care that the when she brought it up when Marianne brought those ideas up that Karen was like at that point saying maybe we should have a joint discussion with the planning commission and at least uh, identify what are the areas that we want to re-look at. Now we could be, able, I mean we, the council, might be different than we an individual council and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, does council decide first, yes we, the council wants you to look at that? Or is it we individuals have these different ideas and therefore we want you to re I, I don't know. I, mean, like I know in the past we've gotten specific direction from council, mm -hmm. but it was I like a, 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 a an agreed upon item, you know, from council. It wasn't like there was a minority report, you know. Of, um, but the other issue that was talked about again, and I'll bring it back up, is that the master plan, master, uh, uh, so kind of master plan for use of village property, and that was the other item. That I think Brian Brian brought that up. Karen, or did you? Uh, Jerry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, which is Jerry. That was stimulated by the fact yes. that, that um, council was approached by, uh, by um, <coughs> the Glen, Glen oh, yeah. Allen, yeah. about this piece of land, which we have agreed, I think we made that decision now, to sell to them for, it's about water. It was right. already had a conservation easement on it. But they want to do specific things to, in terms of the land and keeping the water uh, cleaner and so on. So, um, so that's what Jerry brought up. You know, we don't have a plan. We haven't thought about sort of village-owned land, and we don't have a master plan for it. So, so as a precursor to those there. conversations, we need to get the companies to plan out and make ourselves familiar with it, and make sure we get our arms around that. So. And so we still have the request in to get hard copies. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, if it's not online, I don't want to. Rose yes. and I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start with the online version. Yeah, yeah I won't. Because yeah, okay. I'm going to look at it and underline yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And, and Jerry, can you give, email us the list of uh, 
village owned property, so we know what is village owned property? Yeah, well, I'll, 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 I think we have to go and I And I think I, would you mean if I correct me wrong, didn't you send that to me in two? You, you listed places like the glass farm, and then you listed the someone listed the parks. Well, I can't even I can't even remember doing that, but I'm quite certain it's all contained in the comprehensive plan as well. So no. well, I'll, 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 I'll get with you on when I get the list that I have. I mean, in sure. a really simple way, if you want to just go on Green County's GIS and type in village of Springs, it'll tell you every single piece of property, every little corner place that's owned by the village. And that's a real quick way to know. Green County, uh, uh, Green County uh, has, uh, it's under their GIS map. Okay. Geographical. And we have some, uh, Green County has some of the best GIS map things around. Okay. Yeah. So. I was going to say, I almost feel like the master plan of village on property, that is a discussion, it seems to me, that should maybe happen. Uh, at council first or council yes. with, and, and um, the same with the questions that Mary Ann was bringing up. But the thing about the comp plan, I, I honestly think you guys can just yeah. go forward and look at it. Yeah. yeah. It was adopted in 2010. We'll look, I mean, you know, it was also the same. After that was the visioning. I'm sure that was incorporated into it. Like you said, there may not be a lot that needs there to be updated because, yeah. because of vision. Because of vision. Well, vision was a Oh, you're right, Vision. Yeah, that was right. It was all about the same time. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, if uh, there's nothing else, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.